What's going on, everyone? Thank you for coming to watch. We've got, guys, an update on a pretty big pattern change that's going to leave, lead to several major storm systems that will track across the central and eastern U.S., and as well as a extreme cold snap that's going to be entering the western U.S. This could lead to a spark up in some snow, winter weather, and even a severe weather event. So I've got you guys the latest details and information coming right up. So taking a look here at our current radar, you can see we don't have much going on. We do have a storm system that's uh, trying to get its act together across portions of the upper Midwest. You can see that our central low pressure is localized right around the uh, North and South Dakota, South Dakota borderline here. Um, and we're starting to see um not i wouldn't say this i mean this is definitely not at nearly as strong enough to really create any severe weather but if this were to have the right ingredients and in the right location which would be farther south then this would have the shape of a severe weather event but this is starting to get a little healthier it's starting to grow but it's very weak right now you can see we do have a tail of some rainfall that's actually associated with a um, a cold front that's weak, very weak cold front that's pushing on the back side of it. All right, and so basically what's going to happen is this storm system is going to move off to the east, and at the same time, we're going to get a pop-up low that's going to develop off the coast of the Carolinas, and that's going to meet up with the system, and it's actually going to form a nor'easter. So basically what that's going to bring is that's going to pull in a lot of moisture from uh, the Atlantic Ocean right here, and that's going to pull it right into the coast, bringing gusty winds and heavy rainfall. So I'm definitely going to keep you guys um, updated on what's going to be happening with that. But a lot of things appear to be uh, appear to be happening after um, we, we we're finished with this system. So again, taking a look at the radar, not much going on, just the storm system out here in the uh, northern plains. But we also do have uh, some rain showers, some very persistent, it's uh, very heavy rainfall moving over. Uh, this is north of the Seattle area, so pretty much the uh, Washington, uh, uh, Idaho, and Montana, um, U.S., Canada borderline. But you know, other than that, not much going on at the moment. So we look at our current alerts. You can see that, you know, starting out here for the most part, you know, it's very quiet. But you can see in South Dakota, we do have a high wind warning. We've been getting gusts up to 45 miles per hour. And that's certainly going to lead to some trees down because those gusts will, they have been reaching above 50 miles an hour in some places. So, you know, there will be trees down. There will be some power lines down. So, you know, don't be surprised if you come across a closed road because a tree has fallen across the road or there are lines down. Just make sure that you're aware that, you know, you're not in any... You're not, you know, you don't want to be, um, you don't want to be caught in one of these dangerous situations where, you know, you're all of a sudden you get some bursts of wind and, you know, there's some trees coming down beside you. You just want to make sure that you're probably, you probably want to stay inside, especially if you're under that high wind warning because, uh, unsecured, unsecured objects that are pretty much lightweight will definitely be blowing around today. So that's going to be a hazard as well, but if you're in that wind advisory, just make sure that you're aware that you are uh, receiving some gusty winds, but it's not too crazy at the moment. All right, so for the West Coast, um, you have a heat advisory. Um, goes out for parts of the coastal regions of California, excuse me. All right, but uh, you can see on the coastal, uh, coastal central of California, if, if you want to put it that way, you guys are under a heat advisory. Same thing for uh, the San Diego area and southwestern California. You go into the north along the coastline here, you have a dense fog advisory for portions of northwestern Oregon. Just make sure that you're aware that there could be some hazardous conditions on those roadways because you can't really see that well. Visibility drops a lot when you get some dense fog, so um, you, you maybe want to you wait a few, wait a few, an hour or two um, before you're actually uh, you're tra attempting travel, um, just so you can wait until that fog lifts um, eventually. So we go over to the GFS model for the eastern U.S. So this is where I'm going to be breaking down the uh, nor'easter. We're not going to be getting into really the extreme details of the nor'easter. We're just going to be looking at what we can expect. Um, pretty much how strong the storm will get, where it will go, and then we'll look at the rainfall totals. But 
Um, I think if I can get an update in for you guys tomorrow, which it's possible, there's a possibility, I will uh, give you guys the full breakdown on the system uh, because this is a, this is a, an actually a, de a developing system that's only a few days out. So we looked at our current setup, what we've got going on. This is our very weak system, only 1,002 mil bars, but it is going to be gaining some strength. It's trying to push against this relatively strong high pressure guarding the eastern west here. Um, 1,023 millibars, and so we see what happens here as we uh, go forward in time, and this high pressure does get kicked out to sea from this uh, storm system here, and it's, moved, it's still chugging along the northern and eastern U.S., and then here is your pop-off low, your pop-up low right here. All right, it's popping off the coast of North Carolina. All right, watch as it slowly grabs all this moisture out here, in the Atlantic and just flings it right into the coast. All right, and so we see what happens here. And it also it, it, keep in mind that this storm will meet up with this one. And if we can get um, if we can get the right conditions with enough moisture with this storm, that this storm doesn't eventually grow into a stronger storm, that's gonna be where we get a nor'easter, and that's how we're gonna get one eventually just one low pressure storm. The main storm that's going to, excuse me, um, cause the problems here. And so these storms eventually, they meet up. And this is your uh, this year developing low. That's going to be your nor'easter. And it's they, they're starting to meet up. And you can see that it's actually weakening. It's taking something off of this system, uh, which which key, which tells you that there, that there there is a developing storm system within this one. And here you go right here, 997 millibars. Um, this would most likely be when you get your nor'easter. And when we start getting the rainfall, well, if you're on the coastline of southern New England, all right, we're getting it to Friday. This is 8 a.m. Friday. It most likely will be drizzling. But if you're on the co if you're on the outer banks of North Carolina or, or up up and down this coastline right here, all right, you got to be ready for some extreme downpours. I mean, when you see these splotches of red oranges and yellows off the gfs that is i mean that those are rainfall rates that could get up to over an inch per hour which will lead to flash flooding so it's a big system only 54 hours out this is only a, like two days out all right we're getting to friday now we get to 2 p.m friday now we're seeing rain pulling out of the uh ohio valley but still it's raining down here into the southeast the deep south you've got the mountainous regions of the carolinas tennessee uh, into northern Georgia, um, up up the Appalachian Mountain region. Um, so a lot of rainfall is expected with this system, and then eventually this is where your 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 main low pressure uh, your your main low pressure center forms. And notice how we get some very tight winds that will come out of the northwest. Look at this; these lines here. I've mentioned this before. When you see these lines, these little black and gray lines in between. Uh, the warm air and the cold air boundaries here. All right, this is showing where your wind stream is. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, and so basically, uh, when these wind streams are close together, they're really packed together. That's when you can see those gusty winds, those stronger winds. And so these winds are start starting to take shape. They're starting to wrap around the center of the storm. That's how a nor'easter is, pretty much. Let me redo that circle. That was very bad, but. We will be starting to see at this point, which we're getting into uh, midday Saturday, we have stronger winds coming out in the northwest, and that's going to be wrapping into the system, bringing even more moisture um, left over from that from the past system, just bringing more and more moisture into it. And so that's gonna, I mean, that's gonna definitely create a pretty pretty bad scene uh, on those roadways, especially for travel. You know. You're going to have gusty winds. I mean, there could even be some small limbs down on those roadways, but very heavy rainfall. Just not a good day in general for travel as we get into our weekend. This is going to be, I believe this is New York City's eighth wet weekend in a row, and that's getting close to the record here if, if it hasn't broken it. But, you know, I'm out here in northwestern Long Island, and so it's pretty much the same for us. Uh, it's just we're getting so unlucky with our weekends. It's been like... Ever since the you know mid uh, September, early September, really, um, we've been just getting a lot of rain on the weekends. But the storm system gets very strong. This is looking like a traditional nor'easter. If you look at the past nor'easters, 
on the GFS. I know I covered a lot um, it, last winter. All right, you can see that they all pretty much look the same. You know, not not always like with that precipitation because you know a lot have snow, a lot have more rain, but this one just looking like you know kind of the traditional setup for a nor'easter. But again, look how tightly packed these wind streams are. These are now very strong winds coming out of the northwest, most likely pushing down into excuse me, New Jersey. And then um, we could also see some stronger winds that come onshore after uh, these these winds out, uh, out the northwest start wrapping and rotating around the center of the storm. All right, that's where you get those gusty winds with nor'easters. And this storm finally starts to pull out. We're getting all the way to Sunday. This takes from er this takes from early Friday morning all the way to Sunday for this thing to get out. And it's only going to be midway done pretty much by... Uh, 8 p.m. Sunday. So Sunday night is really going to be the main event for you, southern New England and the northeastern U.S. All right, and so that's going to be the period where you see the gustiest wind, the stronger, the strongest winds, and also uh, the very heavy rainfall. And then we get into uh, we're getting into uh, 2 p.m. Sunday. All right, so we're getting midday Sunday. We have some backside snow uh, into the mountains of upstate New York, and then for the rest of the Northeast. Just some light rain, maybe some showers, but you know it's gonna take it's gonna take 126 hours for this thing to finally get out. So, I mean, from now until when this thing gets out, I mean, it's gonna be pretty much five, six days from now. So a long, long time for the system to move through. All right, and then what's putting this into the eastern U.S. is just some high pressure and a weak cold front. This is not strong cold front, but a weak cold front that's gonna be trying to just, you know, stabilize the northern U.S. for a little while. So that's going to be it for uh, the Nor'easter looking at the GFS. We look at our, our rainfall totals. These are our current projected rainfall totals based off of uh, what the um, what the National Weather Service is saying here. So let me zoom. I guess we can keep it like this. But all right, so you can see that, you know, we see a lot of rainfall definitely with the system, but not as much as we could have had because if this was a stronger storm and it had more time to develop, I think we could have seen more widespread, uh, you know, two, three inch rainfall totals. But here you go on the uh, on the uh, outer banks of North Carolina. That's where we bump into that uh, inch and a half to about three inch rainfall range here. This little this uh, out this bank that goes all the way out, like the far most out. Um, that all these banks go. All right, this is where you could pick up the most rainfall. You see in these purples and these reds. I mean, this is approaching three inches of rain. That's some serious rainfall uh, that could lead to flash flooding. And then we see the rest of the, you know, the Ohio Valley and the interior portions of the Northeast in these greens and then the, in these blues. That's going to be around a quarter of an inch to about an inch and a half of rain possible. I would say a little bit. I would say around an inch is a good estimate of half how, you know, how high those rainfall totals will be. Um, same thing for the Mid-Atlantic and the Southeast. But we go into the southern New England and the, you know, uh, like the uh, northern regions of the Northeast. This is where we get those those higher rainfall totals. We're seeing pretty much everyone getting at least an inch of rain. But you go into Maine here and pretty much all of Maine expected to pick up at least an inch and a half rain. Some spotty, some scattered areas here along portions of, uh, Vermont and upstate New York that could pick up, you know, you know, around an inch of rain, two inches of rain. But for really all of southern New England, about an inch, maybe up to an inch and a half of rain is expected. So, you know, nothing really to worry about completely with your, with your rainfall totals. Um, other than those areas that I mentioned with Maine and the Outer Banks of North Carolina, and then obviously in portions of southern New England, there will be some flooded roads, but it's not going to be anything like you know, we had uh, that one Friday in September where we had, you know, just it seemed to be every flooded road, every road out here in southern New England was flooded. But, you know, it's definitely not going to be nearly as bad as it was then. So we look at now uh, what's going to be happening with our pattern change. So as I mentioned earlier, we are we're going to be dealing with a very, very intense pattern change that. It's going to lead to some big, big problems here across the uh, western and central U.S. And so this is going to spark up some storms here. So this is our 8 to 14 day temperature outlook, which was issued 
uh, issued yesterday. All right. And so this is valid for October the 25th to the 31st. So uh, that's that's pretty much just about a week out from now. So that is uh, Wednesday of next week. All right. To about Halloween. And so we see uh, some below average temperatures out here for portions of northern Montana into the Dakotas. All right. This is leaning about 60, 70 percent chance of seeing below average temperatures. All right, and then that, you know, that the, the, the lower risk of below average temperatures, it's still there, but it goes uh, farther down into pretty much all of the western U.S. Still looking at the central U.S., mainly it's going to be near normal, um, even for these areas that are slightly off to the west here, but, you know, we shift gears back to the eastern U.S., all right, we have above average temperatures, all right, so we see pretty much all of the eastern U.S. in a 40 to 50 percent chance of seeing above average temperatures for the extreme southeastern U.S., pretty much just the Gulf Coast, all of the Gulf, all, all of the Gulf Coast, really, in a 60 to 70 um, percent chance. Actually, this might, yeah, I guess this is a 50 to 60 percent chance of seeing um, above average temperatures. So, all right, so this could be our potential uh, pattern change that we see as we get into the end of October. So we look at the current GFS model for our temperatures. I'm going to zoom in here so you can see a little bit better. All right, so I'm going to zoom in pretty much right here so you can see. All right, so let me move myself so you can get this. I actually zoom in just a little bit less. All right, there we go. Perfect. All right, so starting out, all right, you can see that there are some uh, patchy areas here that are seeing some uh, let me actually that was, that was way out um so this is where we are right now so we have um some again some areas that are uh, in, in some patchy uh, cold, uh patchy cold snaps here you can see out in the northwest u.s this little stripe of blue here uh, this is sending temperatures down into the upper 30s and lower 40s for many uh out here in western montana all right the central u.s there's still some ridging going on right here um and you can see a lot of uh, warm air pretty much covering all of the southern u.s and then eventually um all of this gulf moisture pretty much gets surged right into the central u.s and so we'll put this out farther into time here until we get to our big cold snap here so looking at our uh, daytime highs today um you can see everybody is going to get pretty hot you can see um we have pretty much the southern U.S. in general staying in the 70s, 80s. The, you know, the southwestern U.S. getting into the 90s today. Um, among the uh, eastern coastline, we're getting into pretty much around 60 degrees if you're far north into, into the 50s. But uh, even for the northern U.S., it's still slightly, I would say this is still slightly above average, above average warmth that you're seeing um, for pretty much where we are now. You should be in the uh, mid to upper 40s if you're in the northern U.S., like up here in uh, the northwest, the northern plains, and then to the midwest. But we see um, as we get into this weekend, all right, notice how there is all of a sudden a big, big line here of cold air. And you can see a lot of cold temperatures showing up here in western Canada. Keep an eye on this. This is going to be our tricky and our, uh, our tricky um uh, cold front that's really going to be causing the big issues um, as we see our pattern change. But this already we're getting into this is just tomorrow and we're just kind of seeing that pattern change. All right. And you may you think that, you know, looking at our daytime highs tomorrow, this pretty much looks the same, but this will flip flop. All right. All of this, uh, this hot and uh, warm air will all be thrown into the eastern U.S. So it will be all thrown off to the east, allowing this cold air to move right into the western U.S. And boom, right here. Here you go. Look at that right here. All this cold air starting to ooze its way into the northwestern U.S. And so we're getting into this weekend. We're getting to Friday. All right, we still got above average temperatures, hanging, barely hanging on to above average temperatures in the western U.S. Uh, well, northwestern U.S., I, I should say, but... Um, Eastern U.S. actually getting pretty cool, but, you know, we get into Saturday, and Saturday is going to be pretty weird, because Saturday we have two, uh, two, uh, 
cold air masses are going to be traveling down from Canada. We have one that's moving down from uh, southeastern Canada, all right, right here. All right, this is going to be moving pretty much directly down into the eastern U.S., replacing um, the nor'easter, all right, because this is also helping to push out the nor'easter. It's kind of the cold air is kind of moving like that. But we also do have the main event, which is this cold front here, which is very strong coming down from northwestern Canada, and that's just going to be continuing to chug and chug into the uh, northwestern U.S. So that's really going to help set the stage for some uh, some just widespread below of temperatures in general for the northern U.S., all right? And so we get even later into October, we're getting into uh, – well, let me go way back in time. I was way too fast here. So, all right, we'll put this out to Monday. All right, we're getting into Monday, and now that, that warm air is almost vanishing here. We see uh, widespread 40s and 30s for some for some in the mountainous regions of the northwestern U.S. Eastern U.S. starting to warm up a bit. It's still cold here in the northeastern U.S. because you still are hanging on to that cold front that was, that's behind that nor'easter. But this will quickly change. Notice how this ridging out here in the... Um, in the central U.S., all of a sudden, starts to slowly just fall on top of the eastern U.S. And at the same time, look at all this right here. Look at this entire, this huge, huge air mass, this huge cold front. This is a massive cold front. This is a polar vortex, excuse me, that's going to be uh, moving down from southwestern Canada. And that's going to really, that's that's the reason why all this warm air is toppling over the eastern U.S. is because of how strong that cold front is. And that same, uh, that, you know, that different uh, cold front I was talking about coming down from southeastern Canada, well, we get to Monday, and that's when this thing comes down. And now we're seeing in the interior portion, portions of the northeast getting down into the 30s and the 40s. All right, we're breaking up into some 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 areas, even into uh, portions of northern Michigan, into Wisconsin, upstate New York, mountainous regions of uh, Virginia, into into West Virginia, and then uh, south southwestern PA. We could get below freezing. That's how cold it's going to be, and uh, that cold that cold air kind of quickly retreats because it senses that wool that uh str the very strong that stronger uh, warm air that's going to be toppling over the eastern U.S., um, and so you got three things happening at once, all right? You've got cold air that's going to be moving down briefly into the eastern U.S. and then pulling right back out, all right? Then you've got that warm air, that ridging in the central U.S. that's going to be just shifting right over into the eastern U.S., and then we bump into our third reason, uh, why, which ties to why we're seeing this, this warm air shifting over to the eastern U.S., it's because we have that huge cold front that's going to be just pushing down into the northwestern U.S. And so this cold front is too strong to really go shift any places. It's just going to keep advancing and keep advancing because this is not, a, I mean, this is, I wouldn't even say this is really above average temperatures. This is not a strong warm front anymore, all right? And so this cold front can quickly take advantage of the northwestern U.S., and sooner than you know it, by Tuesday and then a week out, we see temperatures getting down into the 20s, into the teens in the northwestern U.S. It's going to feel like winter uh, all over again. And this is going to be pretty much what I'm going to call our first major uh, cold front and cold shot uh, of the year for the northern U.S. And so here we go. This is what we don't want to see. All right. As, uh, keep in mind that as this is all happening, all of a sudden the Gulf is heating up with moisture and you get moisture that's going to be flung into the eastern U.S. And, I mean, uh, this, I mean, this is really, this is going to be a, I mean, this is going to be a big, a very, very big event um, next week. Next week's going to be insane, all right? But um, if we do see this warm air get flung into the uh, eastern U.S., and this extreme uh, cold front that is going to be pushing and surging into the northwestern U.S., and they, if those two things uh, press up against each other, I'm afraid we're going to see a huge severe weather event sometime late next week, all right? And so we get into Thursday, 
and the entire northwestern U.S. is, you know, at least down to around the mid-40s into the 30s. Montana getting down to the teens, 7 degrees in, in a few hours. I mean, this is going to be crazy, guys. This cold front is going to be... It's going to be the highlight of the month, really, for October. And we see this cold front, you know, you can see it as we go all the way from Wednesday to Friday. This cold front just continues to advance and advance. And that warm air is now completely stationed. It's stationary right into the eastern U.S. You still got continuous moisture coming up from the Gulf pumping into it. And here comes that cold front. Man, look how strong this is, all right? We can see, I mean, I know this is not uh, included technically in the U.S., but this is associated with that same cold front. This is the heart of that cold front. This could bring temperatures down to negative 5 degrees. This could bring temperatures down below zero, and we're not even into winter yet. We're, we, ju- we just got into fall. And we could already be dealing with uh, below below zero temperatures for some areas in uh, the mountains regions in the northwestern U.S. All right, this is going to be crazy. Five degrees in northwestern um, uh, Wyoming. So this is uh, you know, how many hours is this? This is uh, this is about two hundred and four hours out. This is a very long time, and it's going to change for sure. But you know. Uh, sometimes the GFS, it overdoes, the, it overdoes these things. It, it kind of exaggerates a little bit. But I think if the GFS is really showing something like this all right, going on, I, I don't think that this can really change a whole lot. I mean, I think this will change. I don't know if this will intensify. All right, that would be really bad. And, you know, that, that I don't that I'm not thinking that that's going to happen. But this could also weaken and we could be dealing with a, something a little less major. But... This is just showing a very, very dangerous and just a bad setup um, and something that we don't want to see as we get into October. And all of a sudden, uh, if you notice here, if you see the sharp gradient here, all right, along the central U.S., we see um, this very sharp this very sharp cutoff right here. All right, we see uh, pretty much 70, 70 degrees right here um, in portions of western and southwestern Kansas. This is just an example of something that we're going to see. All right, so we see very, very cool, uh, very, very warm temperatures getting into the 70s for western uh, Kansas. And then knocking on its door right next to it, you've got temperatures that are getting down to potentially below freezing. All right, and so when you have those two strong, uh, uh, pretty much just temperature, these uh, boundaries of warm air and cold air pressing up against each other, that's causing tension in the atmosphere. You've also got that surging Gulf moisture into the system. It's all going to come together and really. That I mean, that's gonna that's that. This is uh, what what could spark a pretty major severe weather event. And this cold air, sure enough, it advances, and now we're seeing those below those below zero, well below zero temperatures uh, entering the northwestern U.S. And so again, I. I don't know what's going on here with the GFS. I don't know if this is going to eventually, if we once we get to this point in in time here, if this is going to appear to be over uh, reacting to the signal, or if it's just you know if it's uh, pretty much around the same. Whatever it's going to happen, I think it's going to be big, and I think it's going to be bad here. But you can see how sharp that really is. We see right here in the fifties and sixties out here in the Midwest. And then right up here into uh, portions of western uh, the, the the Dakotas and then western Montana, you're into the 20s. All right, so it's going to be a very sharp cutoff with your temperatures. Still in the heart of this cold front, you're still below zero for all of western Montana and portions of Idaho. I mean, this is going to be a the headlight of the headline of the fall, really. And so um, you do see uh, suddenly some. Uh, this this very sharp line. Look at this. You're in the 60s here in us uh, in the 70s here in southern uh, in southern Missouri, and then pretty much as you get into later into the day, all of a sudden you're in the 50s. So a 20 degree difference here, and you know uh, we saw one of these scenarios actually unfold um, uh, last winter 
Uh, this actually happened in Colorado. I remember in Denver. All right, uh, a meteorologist or a swarm chaser, I'm not sure, um, was stationed uh, somewhere in downtown Denver. And um, so it, I think it started out, the daytime temperature was around 50 degrees. And I think that it got down to like seven degrees or something. I mean, that, I mean, that is a, almost a 40, that's a 45, around, around a 45 degree difference in less than 24 hours. So this could really cause some problems. And when you get that kind of a storm set up, and you have that much moisture and warmer temperatures in uh, front of in front of that cold front. That's certainly going to lead to uh, um, severe weather. And so we see uh, just you know, I mean, this is this is ridiculous how cold it could get out here in the northwestern U.S. So if this appears to be something that something like what we're what we are actually going to see, um, we are, we're going to be dealing with a we're going to be dealing with something that's really going to, it's going to be a blockbuster storm system. And so we finally get back to uh, somewhat, I mean, I don't even know what's going to happen after this too, because, you know, this is way too far out really, but we approach uh, November, we're getting into a new month, November, and things are going to be very different. Things are going to change, Um, uh, but that's really going to be our first, like, big and major cold front and so uh if you've looked at my winter forecast and you've just you know you've been staying along with me on the channel for long enough you've probably heard you've probably heard me say uh, multiple times how this winter i'm expecting some very very big and major cold cold shots are really going to lead to big problems um especially for the northern u.s well this is what i'm talking about and if we're seeing this in october um, think of what this could be like in February or in January. All right, just something to leave out there, something for you guys to just think about. But, you know, we're really, uh, we're actually really cutting this close with time here. I don't want to go over 35 minutes, so I'm actually going to cut out the tropics. I might do a separate video later uh, today on the tropics. So uh, by the time some of you guys are watching this video, it might be out if I ever do one. I'm not sure, but uh, just bear with me. Um just I got it. I just got to get all this information out in a uh, relatively short amount of time because you know, just uh, I got a lot of things to do. So you know, we look at the GFS model here. This is we 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 we, we previously looked at the GFS more for our temperatures, all right? But now we're going to be taking a look at our GFS model for uh, excuse me, our um, pretty much just our precipitation here. All right. So here comes your nor'easter. That moves out. All right. All of a sudden, pretty much the center, pretty much all of the U.S. is calm for the most part, you know, but except the uh, East Coast. All right. And so, when do you see uh, any storm system starting to form here? So this is we're getting into the twenty third. So we're getting into Monday. This is that cold shot that I was talking about that I showed on the GFS when we were looking at our temperatures. That's the one that's coming down from southeastern Canada. Uh, it appears that this one. Uh, this the, the main one that's going to be very strong. This is it right here. Um, but this is the bad news. We do get a low pressure storm that is strong enough to continue strengthening here. 998 millibars, and this is just going to continue to try and strengthen. Some snow could meet up with this uh, cold front here. Um, and you know I don't even. You can't really ask really if it's if it's cold enough to snow. It's cold enough to snow. All right. Um, but these wind streams, look how tight these are. They're almost completely together. And that's going to show, uh, some potentially dangerous wind speeds. And at this point, we're starting to see some, uh, cooler, very cold air moving down into portions of Northern Montana. And at the same time, you get another storm system that starts to take shape across the Southern U S and, you know, I mean, this could look like a, some, some sort of a severe weather event. Uh, around the 25th, which is a week from today, all right, and so we see what happens with this system, and it continues to get stronger, it still races across the central U.S. At the same time, you have this major storm system developing off the northwestern U.S., and if these two systems combine, I mean, I don't know what's going to happen, all right, because this is, I mean, this is 170 hours out, but I'm telling you guys right now, if these two systems combine, Something bad is going to happen, and it's going to happen quick, all right? And so 
We still are hanging on to some sort of what could be a severe weather event in the future out here in the southeast. In the north here, um, we have we still we got heavy rainfall, maybe even some thunderstorms that could be strong to severe. Very cold air still moving down, and when you get some sort of a system with that cold air, you're all you're gonna get is snow. And so if you, I mean, I mean this is gonna be this gonna this could really be a very strong system here, but we could um uh, we we will definitely have enough cold air that we could see feet of snow if if we actually do get a strong enough system and it meets up with that cold air because uh this entire region is below in it's in below free below uh below freezing temperatures here and so we see a lot of rainfall uh or, or I should say a lot of snowfall falling across the Dakotas into western uh, western Nebraska, and then you can see pretty much just the north central U.S. in general, all seeing a lot of snow. Very, very tight wind streams here. We're going to talk about these. I'm sure that there are going to be gusty winds with this system, whatever we get, all right? Um, and then a lot of rain on the front side, too. Some nasty wintry mix for uh, portions of central Nebraska. I mean, this is 200 hours out, so this is certainly going to change, especially when it's this sharp of a storm all right you get you're gonna get some uh at least so uh, 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 you know a lot of minor tweaks with this all right and, uh, but this actually eventually tries to move all the way out and on the back side i mean you're still seeing that that cold air breaching all the way down to texas all right and at the same time you have a, a you know another developing system on the back side of of our of our previous system all right, that tries to form here, and uh, this could be a this could be a, a really dangerous storm system too, because it could. I mean, this is showing a signal for another potentially another severe weather event for the southeastern U.S. and uh, a nasty winter storm uh, that could. I mean, this could enter the the southern plains. I mean, this we're talking uh, winter all over again for the southern U.S. in October. All right, so this is pretty crazy what what the GFS is showing um, right now. So uh, I apologize about that. I think the 18, no, 12Z, I don't know what happened here. Um, I don't know, yeah, I don't know what happened here. I guess I think the 12Z GFS just uh, glitched here. Um, all right, and so I guess we can look at the look at the 6Z. All right, oh, yeah, it's, sorry. So I, I didn't realize I was looking at the 6Z, so... The 12Z just came out, and that's why it switched over. But, you know, again, look at the 6Z. We still – we see even some snow down into Texas, down into Kansas, and the south-central U.S. Just a wild scenario that most likely won't happen. But, well, I, I, I don't even want to say that because if – because this – if this does actually happen, I know we'll, we'll have changes with this. We're going to continue watching this throughout the rest of October. But if we do get – as both storm systems do actually develop, we are going to have a wild end to October here. And so this storm system makes all the way to the eastern U.S. Uh, really falls apart. And then we just got some dominating high pressure for, for pretty much both regions of the U.S. But notice how uh, I actually, I, I, was, I was watching a, I was uh, earlier, before this video, I was watching a, uh, forecast video from Mitch West Weather. Um, he he's a great guy. You should definitely watch him. Subscribe to him. He uh, I feature his channel on my channel page, so definitely go check out his channel. But um, he actually noticed that the GFS right here is showing a thousand and fifty millibar high pressure uh, stationed right in the middle of that cold snap, and that's I mean that's that that's ridiculous. That is crazy, and that's going to be blocking any type of storm system to develop across the western u.s and i think that the like the very very end of october meaning like the last few days of october will be relatively quiet um uh, but before that i mean we we really don't know exactly what's going to happen but whatever happens it's going to be big and it's going to be bad so that's all i got for you guys thank you so much for coming to watch we'll see you guys in the next video i i apologize for not being able to include the tropics in today's update i might do a separate update later on the tropics um so be on the lookout for that but otherwise um thank you so much for coming to watch gotta continue watching this uh major pattern change these two storm systems that could develop just a lot of things to talk about a lot of major things 
that seem to be coming um, in the future. So, again, thank you for coming to watch, and I'll see you guys in the next video.